Today I am really contemplating the concept of one of a kind and things that are unique in the world and you're never going to find anything else quite like it. I'm Michelle, this is my Romantic Tangle, and this is my Floss Tube update for Saturday, February 25th, 2023. And let's start with the little possibly slightly cursed project. I've been doing a lot of family stuff over the past week or so and a couple of weeks and not much stitching, but I did manage to finish Love Grows here. I love this project. What drew me to this one was the stone foundation and the steps because I've done a lot of pink or pumpkin quiltings, little houses, and this one, the combination of the fancier than usual windows and those steps and that stone foundation made this one scream to me that I had to stitch it. I had so much trouble with this. To clarify, none of my problems had anything to do with the pattern or the design. They were all my surroundings and my own creation. The second day that I was stitching, my thread was becoming loose from my needle every third stitch. It was driving me batty and it was late enough at night that I didn't really pull myself together and troubleshoot it as quickly as I should have. I had a tiny snag on my fingernail. Not enough to really notice, but enough to catch the thread with every single stitch. Found an emery board, fixed my nail, it got better. I mentioned in the last video that the pink of the front of the house and the pink of the side of the house, I still have a hard time distinguishing between the two. I can see it here on the camera. This could be a sign that my sewing corner needs better light, huh? Well, the pink for the side of the house went missing. I had one bobbin of it. It was old thrifted DMC and I was concerned about getting another skein of the same color and whether it would match as well as I needed it to for the shading to work. So I worked around it. I stitched everything else while I waited for the pink to materialize again and it did and some of these comings and goings, either my sewing corner is haunted or my teenage boys sit in it too much. Then, my husband and I went away overnight, came back. The pattern was between the cushions of the couch. The actual stitch, half stitch piece was nowhere. I don't know what they do when I'm not here. I found it. I was at the point where I was going to make them restitch it. And keep in mind, these boys do not know how to cross stitch. I found it. By then I had found my pink. By then I had realized that some of my leaves up here I stitched while I was worried about the pink were the same color as the gray of the foundation and not the green of the vines. This was, should not have been a challenging project, but this was a challenging project. I did make a couple of slight alterations. That basket is supposed to be white and the little hearts are supposed to be white. And when I picked out my fabric, I thought everything had enough contrast. I didn't realize what color that basket was going to be. So I switched it to the gray from the foundation. And I love this. Like I said, I love the folk arty look of the flowers and the windows and the foundation and all of it. I will show you try to show you. I don't know that it will show up. We talked about keeping your edges from fraying recently and I'm a huge advocate of zigzagging your edges. This is, if it's a small project like this and it's not fraying too much, I don't always bother to go over to the sewing machine. But this one, this is scrap fabric left over from someone else. If you remember the video I did about sorting through another stitcher stash, this was hers. She zigzagged her edges, but she did it like an eighth of an inch in from the edge, so it's still frayed. When I zigzag, and what I would suggest you do if you zigzag, is go over the edge, so you're locking all these loose bits in there. It's not a big deal. It's done. I don't need to worry about the edges anymore. I've had a lot of projects lately that... We're meant to be seasonal and then life got busy and the seasons changed and they got tucked away for next season and there's some Halloween projects that are going on like three years. I had bought some ribbon 
from the Dollar Tree with snowflakes on it for a project. Then I got sick again and the world seems convinced that it is spring now. It was 17 degrees this morning. We had snow two days ago. We are likely to get snow into the middle of March off and on possibly so. I pulled out my ribbon with the snowflakes and this is going to be a lace trim bookmark but I started to wonder could you cross stitch on this? I cross stitched on some burlap last year and it worked and maybe I could stitch on the ribbon. So these letters are all from the same alphabet. They are not the same width. I did not get them properly centered one on top of the other and I did not care enough to pick out that S and move it over because Turns out stitching on burlap Dollar Tree ribbon is kind of a stupid thing to do. <laughs> if you do, it's cute. I think when it's finished into the bookmark, it will be cute. I think it would be cuter if my letters were lined up, but this stuff is really loose and it will, it wants to move. So I was stitching over two, had to be very careful not to pull my stitchers, stitches any tighter than I needed to lay them flat or it would pull the threads out of shape. And these edges really, really want to fray. If I do this again, I would maybe put some fusible interfacing on the back to stabilize the whole thing. You're already having to punch your needle through those painted snowflakes, so I don't think it would make it any harder. There's a potential for something cute here, I just haven't managed to pull it off yet. And I did a little stitching on the shawl. I am based on my yarn usage I am about halfway through and I'm part way through a row so it's not gonna unscrunch I was asked for a tutorial I will do one I just need to finish this shawl so I can show you the cast off edge and start the new shawl so I can show you how to cast it on because the other two that I've already done have been donated and they don't live with me anymore and that's how it's supposed to be if you saw my recent thrifting video, there was a clay wishing well. I don't know why this wishing well has haunted me ever since I first saw it. The video I think was last week, but I actually filmed the footage about a month ago. And I keep thinking about the wishing well and I kept, there wasn't a reasonable opportunity to go see if it was still there. I was sure that either someone had bought it or the store had purged it because it had been a while and I went back today and it was there and there's something a little bit annoying when you see something in the thrift store walk away from it come back later and it's been on the shelf so long that it has gone through all the tag colors of discounts and is back up to full price so I walked away from it again told myself well maybe I'll get back when it's half price again Ran some more errands, realized that I was quibbling over $2. That for some inexplicable reason, I love this stupid little wishing well. And because it is handmade, I'm sure other people have made wishing wells out of clay. But there's not going to be another one just like this. It's not like that piece of milk glass or that vintage piece of furniture where there's another one out there somewhere or another one that's close enough. This, I'm pretty sure it's somewhat unique. I didn't realize when I first saw it, the inside is glazed blue. I don't know why this lives with me now. I had thought I could put pens in it, but it's not deep enough. So I think it's going to be an ord holder. <laughs> it's not going to haunt me anymore because it is mine. And Part of the reason that this appeals to me so much is that my mom had one of those McCoy wishing well planters on top of the fridge when I was growing up. I can't remember exactly. There's not a big story behind it. I think grandma brought, bought it new from the store back in the day. Nobody really cares about this planter, but as a kid and teenager, for some reason, I strongly disliked it. So of course it has been singled out in the will as that will be Michelle's planter. 
And then my kids, who did not know that this thing existed or about the whole wishing well controversy, found one in an estate sale and found and fell in love with it. And then I found one at an estate sale that had a chip in it and was 50 cents and my kids still liked it. So mom's got hers, I've got mine, and now I've got this one that is just a thing. Part of the reason I was able to justify this is decades ago, I... Mom was having a garage sale, I was getting rid of clutter, and I sold a little vase that I had made in middle school art class. There are so many things that I have gotten rid of and never thought of again. There are so many things that I probably still have in my attic that I could have gotten rid of and would have never have thought about again. But that vase has stuck in my head. Maybe because the woman who bought it was so ridiculously critical of it. She collected ugly pottery. And... Her comments were not kind and I wish she hadn't got my vase so a few months back I found this in a free box it is nothing like my little coil vase this is vastly superior to my little coil vase but I had to bring it home and I keep my rotary cutters and a couple of pens in it and I kind of love it and I kind of think that if I lo have loved this and embraced it into my life, that I needed the well too, and I'll be their caretaker. And one of these days, I will probably decide to pass them back to the thrift store and give them, maybe somebody else will want to be their caretaker. And if not, they were here for a while. I kept them in the world a few extra years, maybe. I'm overthinking this, aren't I? I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. I think I'm going to get more stitching done this week because my schedule is actually looking better than it was. Hopefully life stays less crazy than it was. A couple of weeks ago we had a woman in our tree on our front lawn telling my children she was God. My nerves are frazzled enough. I don't need random strangers contributing to the chaos. I'm going to upload this and go stitch and I'll have it ready to post tomorrow morning. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with you with more videos soon.